Okay, a polyhedron. So a polyhedron is a 3D figure whose surfaces are all made up of uh, polygons. And um, my box of shapes I got here, I've got a variety of polyhedrons right here. So these polyhedrons, um, all these surfaces are made up of you know, polygons. This polyhedron is what we call a, um, a pyramid. It's a type of pyramid. Um, with that pyramid, the, the name of it is based off the base. So one, two, three, four, five, we call this a pentagonal pyramid. The pyramid that you're most used to seeing is a square pyramid. No, because the base is a square, right? Now, from there, um, different types, again, poly, I mean, tons and tons and tons and tons and tons, and almost a, there is an amount of polyhedron out there. Your traditional cube, your box of tissues, all right? All the way to then your just traditional, what we call as a rectangular prism. We'll go more in depth into tomorrow with your another type of box of tissues, right? Your rectangle prism, we call it. Now, one type of um, uh, three-dimensional solid we're going to talk about that is not a type of polyhedron is because this is not a made up of polygon. The circle is not a type of polygon. Um, that's going to be made up of different segments. The circle is not falling into that category. Okay? So we're going to talk about a cylinder okay, tomorrow. Think of like a roll of different dollars, right? Um, a cylinder, and then its company is shaped. It's not a pyramid, but very similar to that. It is a cone. So we'll talk about these over the next couple of days, how they're going to go together. All right? Now, from that polyhedron, uh, each polygon that I was going through, each polygon, each surface is called a face. Okay? Um, each polygon there is called a face. So we had different types of polyhedron out there, and I just took out several different types of polyhedron out there. And the ones that we're going to run into um, starting tomorrow, okay, is a prism, and that's where it's a polyhedron with two congruent and um, parallel <coughs> faces. And the example that I have off there to the side which I got one that's closest to it. You have to just kind of imagine it. Um, it's, uh, that is what we call a right triangular prism. Um, I've got a, just a triangular prism here. Where they're saying here, we have two congruent and parallel faces. So that's what's making it a prism um, off that. So we have these, face, these faces, which uh, here, we'll talk about here in a second. Those are called our bases, okay? These two that are parallel to one another, those are called our bases. Top base, bottom base, that makes sense, right? Uh, the other ones, the non-bases, those are called our lateral Those are called our lateral faces. Okay? So the non-parallel uh, ones there, those are called our lateral faces. So that's a prism. We got a prism, and then we got a pyramid. Those are the ones that we're going to focus on. Now they get more crazy for sure. All right, prisms, pyramids, the ones we're going to focus on. Uh, but as you can see down here, we got some other ones going to be happening now. Um, guys, if you play soccer, okay, soccer ball is made for polygons actually. So there's tons and tons of tons of different types of polygons are out there. The ones that we're going to focus on in high school are going to be these main types: uh, prisms and um, pyramids uh, for, for us. Okay. Now, from there. Uh, congruent faces that are contained in parallel planes. I think that's just repeating my bases part of things. Um, yeah, 
and burnt faces that are contained in. Make sure I'm reading that right. Burnt faces that are contained. In the yeah, I think that's just saying bases again. I don't know why it's saying bases again. And then lateral faces. I don't know why that's repeated. <laughs> okay. A little confused myself there. Um, but yeah, I think I'm just repeating that two things again. So the other faces that are not the polygons are those lateral faces. Okay. Now, <clears throat> where the two faces intersect, so if I can take here, where a face, doesn't matter what type of face it is, a lateral face or a, a base, okay, where a face and a face intersect, okay, we're right here, or lateral face with a base, Right there, we call those our edges. Yep. We call those our edges. All right. And then where edges intersect, three or more edges intersect. So edge and an edge and edge. These three edges right here intersect at these points. We call those our vertices. Okay. Our A vertex for a single. Okay. So, those are our kind of our, some of our basics um, off that. All right. So, just knowing some of that simple vocabulary is what we're going to be at. Really, us seeing as we work through here over the next couple days, seeing what the shape of the face is, especially when it's been say on the side, is really where students have the biggest issue. Um, here is I get this what we call, again, a triangle prism, realizing the base, as it's sitting on its side, the base is not the rectangle. The base of this prism is considered to be, again, a triangle. That's where students have the biggest issue with. So that's what we'll be working on over the next few days. Now, all of these three-dimensional figures here, what we can do then with, the, with them is we can take them, cut them up in such a way that we can then take them and lay them flat back to a two-dimensional surface, okay? So on all of my box of shapes there, we can take them, cut them up in such a way, and we can break them down to smaller pieces. We talked about doing that throughout the school year, breaking down to smaller pieces, and breaking down those smaller polygons that we're, we're used to working with. Um, here, that triangle prism that I had, in this instance, um, I can make this into what? One, two, three squares, and it appears to be possibly a regular triangle. Okay? Um, on my pyramid, which is a pentagonal pyramid, I could take this pentagonal pyramid, cut it up in such a way that I fold it out. I got the base as a pentagon, and again, I've got one, two, three, four, five, so five. What appears to be, not appears, they are isosceles uh, triangles. Okay? Now they're all congruent, but they realize they're all congruent isosceles triangles. And I can keep doing that. Heck, I can do that even with a, we'll see this also with a cylinder as well. With a cylinder, we'll talk about this in a little more in depth tomorrow. I can take a cylinder and cut it up to where I get a circle, a circle, top base, bottom base. And then what do I have for the middle? The lateral. I got myself a big old rectangle. Okay? So for all these three dimensional figures, what we can do then is cut them up into these two dimensional shapes. And as we do that and get these two dimensional figures, we call those a net. Okay? We call these a net, a two dimensional figure. Um, that then we can also go the reverse and we can take a two dimensional figure, put it in such a way that we can then fold it up into a three dimensional pattern. Okay. So here's our good old cube. Cube is probably one of the easiest one of the guests probably to think about. It's made up of uh, how many squares? Four and two? Six squares, right? Now, it doesn't have to be exactly this type of net. We could take it a square and move it around to, to where the bonds it pulls back up to the 
Okay. So, with that, okay, um, knowing the different different pieces, and this is where some of the students have a hard time visualizing that three dimensional in their head. Some are easier than others. So, <coughs> and on here, I've got myself a net with the different um, faces labeled out. Okay. Uh, on the labels net, let's go through and uh, label these here. So label the faces, the polyhedra on the right, based on the labels on the, le on the one to the left. The D has been, as you can tell, shaded in a bit, shaded in a bit. So take a quick moment there, based off that orientation. Um, go label out A, B, C, D, E, F, based off of how that would be folded back up. D being our kind of key from one to the next. So I'll give you a quick 30 seconds there a minute. How would that A, B, C, D, E, F have to go based off that D being our key there? Okay. Give you a minute off that. Okay. So as you folded that back up, of those numbers, that are numbers, of those letters there, which of those would you then say consider to be a front face? A, B, C, D, F. What would you consider that to be your front face? I'm sorry? F. F. Yeah, I would say F is considered to be then your front face. So I do have that same net like that. So as we do that, there's D, and then I would say that is your F considered to be your front face. So based off that, there we go. There's D. Now, being two-dimensional here, we're going to go with F being that front face. And then which one is considered to be our back face from F? E is our back face. Of all those, I know it doesn't ask you, but which one would then be considered to be our top face? A is our top face. So if you got A and F and E on the right locations, you should be kind of Same idea. Let's go down to number two. We get ourselves here what we call a pentagonal prism. Again, this is called a pentagonal prism. First off, prism uh, because, well, it's a prism. The top base and bottom base, top and bottom, are the same shape. They're congruent. Uh, they are congruent and they're parallel with one another. Okay, so this is exactly what I have here: a pentagonal uh, prism, just a little bit taller than what's being described there. Okay, pentagonal prism. So with that, that's what we got. Take a minute here. I like you do the same via idea. Go through, answer out as many you can there. A through G. All right. And um, I know it's kind of like a, this top-down perspective a little bit, but imagine as you can, it's been looking like that. Okay, so give you a minute here. Seven, right? It's a pentagon, right? Mm -hmm. And with it being a pentagon as the base, five lateral faces then to connect those five edges at the top. And then don't forget about all the bases, the two bases. So there's seven total bases, two bases, and uh, five lateral bases. Now when I say name the bottom base, let's go back throughout the school year. The base is a pentagon, so when we name a shape, pick, pick a vertex and walk it around. Just like we name a triangle or a quadrilateral or a pentagon, pick a base, but make sure you're picking the bottom base. So somebody, do you have a name for the bottom base? Give me the name of the bottom base. All right, so give me a vertex on the bottom. F, and then walk it from F. F, G, H, I, that's it. Okay, 
just pick a vertex and walk it either clockwise or counterclockwise, but um, don't skip over one. Don't jump left to right, up and down. Like Just go clockwise or counterclockwise. Name me the front face. The same idea, but focus on the front face. Now what's the front face? D, C, yep, D, C, H, I. Pick a vertex on the front face. So here's my front, okay? And I don't care where you start, just pick a vertex on the front. I, C, H, D, one of those, I don't care, but pick a vertex, D, C, H, I, and then go and be consistent clockwise, counterclockwise, don't care. How many total edges do you got? So, you got five up top, right? There's five. We got five down below because it's a pentagon. So far, we got ten, right? And then I got to connect from vertex to vertex. So that's another five. So I got five, ten, and fifteen, I think I heard, right? That's where some students have a bit of an issue. Five, name, excuse me, name the five edges that form the top. Base. So that's where we're naming segments, an edge is a segment. So top base, name me one of those edges. EA. EA. And then what? AB. And then BC. And then CD. And then DE. That's it. Edgement. Edgement. Wow, that's a good one. Edge is a segment. I guess that works just as well. Edgement. Edge is a segment. I kind of like that. An edge is a segment. All right. Um, what's that? Something like that. So an edge is a segment. Just use your, again, proper notation. How many vertices do we have? Vertices are where, again, those three are more uh, edges are intersecting. Five up top, five down below. I got ten, right? And what would you say is considered to be the back left face? So here's my front face. Here's my two back ones, I would say. And back left, I would say, is that one. So E and then A and J. E and then A and then F and A, J. Okay? So trying to get you into that three-dimensional thing. Let's keep with that three-dimensional thing. Okay? That's where we're at this week. Okay. We have here what we call a cross section. Okay? If we take and cut a three dimensional figure, we can cut it any which way. We can cut it horizontally, we can cut it vertically, we can cut it at an angle, we can cut it multiple ways. And then if you were to take a look at it, you know, break it apart, then after you cut that and take a look at it, what shape is steering you back? Um, that's a cross section. So, one thing is, you know, you take a loaf, of, excuse me, a loaf of bread before it's been sliced. All right, and as you slice it, now you have your sliced bread, right? Those are cross sections. Um, take a um, stick of butter. All right, and as you know, well, maybe no, I don't know. But if you look at the wrapper on a stick of butter, they have uh, out there tablespoons. And as you cut that stick of butter. To my hunk of a stick of butter here. Okay? And as you cut a tablespoon out there, there's eight tablespoons I believe on there. As you cut that, what shape would be staring you back if you cut off that stick of butter? That tablespoon of butter. The square is usually staring you back. That's a cross section. Okay? So cross sections are always going to be two dimensional. Never give me a three dimensional name for a cross section. Uh, so here in this pyramid, this square pyramid, 
if you were to come horizontally and lop off that top part, it's parallel to the base of our pyramid. We're staring at a uh, square as our uh, cross section as we cut it horizontally. So cross sections, again, are always two-dimensional uh, figures. So the answers for two-dimensional should always be squares, rectangles, triangles, circles. I better not hear anything that's a three-dimensional name for a cross-section. In this instance, for number three, okay, I get my uh, pyramid. We do a vertical cross-section, but it's not going through the, through the middle. Of the, uh, of the pyramid. They took the cross section and, and brought out the cross section just a bit of a hair out front. And by doing that, what they do is they, and they got it highlighted for you, they created what we have. Again, it's a little bit harder to say there. See there. It is a trapezoid. Okay? If they were to pull that backwards and go right through what we call the apex, and the apex is the uh, top of that pyramid, the top vertex, um, then we would have been seeing a triangle. If I then pulling that forward a little bit or backward, uh, we have a trapezoid. Okay? We got ourselves a sphere. Okay? We got ourselves a sphere. If you were to cut that sphere as a horizontal, or sorry, vertical cross section, vertical cross section, and open it up, what type of cross section you see there? It's a, it's a circle, right? So cross sections are not necessarily too difficult, but some of them can get a little awkward to see. Back to my stick of butter. Again, if we cut it like this, okay? If we cut it like that, where you're cutting tablespoons, we're going to see a, uh, what? a square. But I don't know too many recipes that ask you to cut a stick of butter uh, in lengthwise like that. That'd be a bit of a weird uh, cut. But what is staring back at me? What shape? A rectangle staring back at me on figure two. Okay? Rectangle. Now, letter D is one of the odd ones. Students have a hard time visualizing. Trying to get a pyramid. And as you can tell, we're cutting it down the middle. If we were to try to cut that, what shape would be staring back at you as you tear that apart? It's a rectangle. Right. We are staring at a rectangle on this one as well. Okay. What shape is that one going to be? Is it a hexagon or a pentagon? One, two, three, four, five. It's a pentagon. It's parallel to that base. That one should be a little bit easier to see if I could write. It's a pentagon. Those are ten, tend to be a little bit easier to see when they are clearly parallel to the base. It is the base. Okay. A little donut or bagel. Okay. Circle within a circle. Um, so when we cut that, we go for bagel style, what do we have there? You pop that out, what do you have? A circle, kind of within a circle, right? What we call that is concentric circles. Unless you decide to go with that weird cut from Redco where they slice the vertical. Okay. We're cutting it parallel to the base. What shape is the base on that one? It's a triangle. So therefore we have a base that is a triangle. The last one there. Horizontal cross section here. What shape is our base for the cross section? Is it a hexagon? One, two, three, four, five. It looks like it's yeah, six sides, so it's a 
hexagon. Okay, so those are our cross sections. Now, last thing we're going to do is take our two dimensional figures and spin them really quick. Okay, this is going to then create ourselves a three dimensional figure. So <clears throat> we to were to take then this last one here, all right, and start spinning that rectangle really quickly. Don't stop. If you stop and you just do it one time over that line, that is what we call reflection. We've done reflections. I'm not going to create uh, a second two-dimensional figure. I'm not creating a bigger rectangle. What we want to do is create a revolution, okay? So as we keep spinning this continuously around that line, okay, we start to then create a three-dimensional figure. Reflection is just boom, we're done. Okay, I want to spin that around that line to create a three dimensional figure. So, anybody have an idea what shape we create when we spin this rectangle around? Yeah, we are creating then a uh, cylinder. So, a revolution of that did not come out. Revolution of a, a rectangle images. So that's what we're creating as you spin that rectangle around. Revolving it around that line, yep, you're creating that cylinder shape. So we get ourselves a cylinder. You spin that triangle around the y axis. Doesn't really matter what axis you want to take it out. When you spin that triangle around, what shape are you creating there? Okay. So as we revolve revolution of a cone, did it catch it? It did not catch it. Did it catch it yet? Concealer? No. There it goes. Images. Okay. Revolution of a cone, or sorry, triangle to create a cone, like you said. Okay. So a triangle is going to typically create us a cone. And then let's go over to layer D. If we revolve it about the y axis, a what? Um, a half circle. We revolve about the y axis, what are you creating there? A sphere. Correct. So a revolution. Let's see if it catches it this time. Of a what? Half circle. Man, it doesn't catch it, does it? Uh, revolution of a circle. Close as I'm going to get it. I guess I'm not popping up. Well, that's a close one. Yep, that's what I needed. All right. As you said, that's creating ourselves a sphere. Okay. And then what about the last one there? We're revolving about the x-axis. Right. Is it a full sphere in the last one? No, because this one does say about the x-axis, so this is coming around kind of top down, isn't it? So with this one, it's not revolving this way to give us a full sphere. This is giving us a hemisphere. Okay? So half a sphere, right? So that is the difference there. we got to watch out for which way we're revolving. Okay? Which we're going to do more work with over the course of this week. All right, so for today, today we're on.